Welcome to a brand new episode of Gadget Nation with me, Adam Carruthers. Here we are, Ara Damansara, Double A Cafe. Really excited about today's show because we've got a lot to show you. But the one I'm really focused on is some virtual reality from Samsung. Saw it overseas, finally here. Can't wait to show it to you. It'll be a lot of fun. So let's start the show. Samsung Malaysia Electronics unveiled its latest flagship models, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 and Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. The Galaxy Note 5 is a stunning upgrade to Samsung's flagship Galaxy Note line. Distinctly renowned for its advancement toward pen computing, the Advancement S Pen is a revolutionary innovation that is unique to the brand's Galaxy Note series. Meanwhile, the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus now comes with a big screen for increased visibility, an improved form factor and design of 7000 series aluminium, making the device sturdier from its predecessor. Both Galaxy Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus is available now in Malaysia, market price at 2699 ringgit and 3099 ringgit respectively. Oppo Malaysia has revealed the arrival of the Mira 5, featuring a 5-inch QHD display and a 1.2 GHz Snapdragon 410 SoC that powers the device. It is one of the beautiful mid-range smartphones with an elegant diamond-like design on its glass back. The device is available nationwide for a retail price of 998 ringgit. Smartwatches have become the new wearable fashion among the tech lovers. In recent news, most tech brands are taking a new approach in announcing their wearable category. LG is announcing a luxury LG Watch Urbane Lux, a limited edition 23 karat gold version smartwatch. It offers the same technical specs as the regular Urbane released earlier this year, but to justify its price tag with a gold body, a strap made of alligator leather, and an exclusive shiny lacquer case. Samsung, meanwhile, announced that the Samsung Gear S2, their latest innovation at IFA 2015 in Berlin earlier this month. Samsung Gear S2 comes in a versatile, circular design with an intuitive custom UX, and advanced features that enable users to enhance, personalize, and bring more fun to their mobile experience. Sony, on the other hand, introducing the Weina Wrist, which is short for Wear Electronics Naturally, a stylish watch that earns its smart credentials by packing technology into the strap. Weina Wristband lies on NFC chips that support the Japanese Felicia standard and lets wearers enjoy contactless payment. It also features a seven-color LED for notifications, vibration alerts, fitness tracking, and is water-resistant down to around 30 meters. Not many bits of technology or apps or anything in the world of gadgets gets me riled up as much as virtual reality because I've been waiting a lifetime to have a fully immersive experience. And finally, we've got our hands on something which comes very close to doing just that. It's from Samsung, it's virtual reality, and it could very well be the future. Wow, this is... This is so cool. Let me just slide off what I have in my head and say that is virtual reality at its best, currently anyway, and I am absolutely in love with this. It's actually a device from Samsung, which I've tried before when I was overseas, before it came out in Malaysia. Finally, it's out here, and the best part is it's not really gonna bust the bank to have something as awesome as this. That is, if you already have a Samsung Galaxy S6. The actual VR set here, the Gear VR, is less than a thousand ringgit. In fact, it's less than 800 ringgit. It's 799 ringgit. So obviously, as a price point, that is very, very accessible. Not too expensive at all. And yes, this is not the first VR set we've seen from Samsung. In fact, they had one for the Note, which came out last year. The Note 4, that is. And it was a little bit troublesome, I would say. So a lot of tweaks have been made to further improve the experience for the S6, is like the innovative edition. And I have to say, it's really, really nifty. So why do I think it's cool? How does it work exactly? Well, let's get started.
Firstly, everything plugs in via the front. Now, unlike before, you can fully see the phone when it's using the Oculus Rift. So let's put that down, not Oculus Rift, rather the Gear VR is powered by Oculus Rift. So we got a Galaxy S6, as you can see right here, pretty standard, and it all clips in here. So at the base, we've got the USB thing there. So it clips in like such. And then we've got the clip release button here, which clips it into place. And it's firmly in. So everything is then channeled into this, as you can see right there. That's where you're looking. And that's pretty much it. That's the most basic of basics of how you get everything to work. There's additional things around the side. For example, the focus button is here at the top. At the base here, you can see right there, we have the USB port. And we've got the buttons here at the side for you to play around and have some fun with it. Basically, that's how you start operating it. So once it's on, it's pretty comfortable once you address uh, all the straps here so that you can actually make it comfortable, making sure it's not too tight, but not too loose that it's gonna start sliding off your face, etc. And it's got the padding on the back of your head as well. So a lot of thought has obviously gone into it in terms of the comfort and how long you can use it for. And once it's on, that's when things get really, really fun. There's been noticeable improvements for this version as opposed to the previous one, which came out with the Note. For one thing, USB pass-through allows you to charge the device, keep it powered up effectively whilst it's in operation. Before this, you couldn't do that, so the battery would run out, and then you can't really use this VR set or your phone, as a matter of fact. However, now that's all out of the window, so you can keep it charged whilst you're using it. There's also a little internal fan which supposedly helps in terms of fogging on the screen. Doesn't help too much in my opinion, so be a little bit cautious of that. And in terms of what you would use it with, well, you can like play around with the games here and you can select certain things, which is a little bit cumbersome, a little bit irritating. So when I tried it out initially, I paired up the phone and the device with an actual uh, Bluetooth like, like joystick sort of thing. And we've actually seen that last season on the show. So that allows you to control the games, the buttons on a joypad, whatever you're using, whatever you partner up with this in terms of Bluetooth, and it's a lot easier to operate in that sense. Also, there are speakers here, phone speakers, but you can also plug in headphones and use that, which I would also recommend. But in terms of how it works when it's on your eyes like that, it detects everything when you're moving around, like such. So that is why it's really, really cool. I mean, it doesn't detect more advanced movements, like if I was to walk around here, it doesn't know that, but head movement, it can detect because of all the technology inside the actual VR set. So that's pretty, pretty nifty as well. And when you're playing a game, you can really look around the world that you're in. Obviously, it has to be made for VR, not just any game, like Angry Birds or something. And it's so cool, he's looking up and down, and it just feels like you're underwater because this feels like, uh, you know, the big things you wear, the goggles when you're going underwater and diving or something. It's a similar effect to that, and wow, is all I can say. Now, if you just wanna kick back and watch a movie though, there's the app, so it feels like you're actually in a theater. You look around and you can see like the theater seats there, like cinema seats, and then you have like the screen projector there, and it feels like that, so it's pretty, pretty cool. Overall, I think this is awesome, and I think it's just the start of things to come. Thanks to the fact it's powered by Oculus, who are just the leaders in something like this. I can't wait to see more from Oculus themselves in terms of the PC, uh, virtual reality, but in terms of portability, this is also very cool. I mean, ultimately, it's not gonna be powered by itself. That's the coolest thing. So you can pack it into your bag. So if I take it out, the phone, it's not too heavy. A lot of the weight is actually from the phone. So this can easily slot into your bag, just fold it up a little bit, tighten it up, put it in, and you're good to go. So if you're on a flight, if you're gonna go somewhere, just stick these on, and you're good to go in terms of watching your movie, etc. So a lot of tweaks have been made. If we had been looking at the one which came out for the Note, I probably wouldn't say it's that great because there was a couple of things holding it back, but at least Samsung listened. At least Samsung decided to tweak what was wrong with their well, first edition of this. Now, this edition has come out. 
and it's really, really something else. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and it's a lot of fun to be had. Very cool, can't wait to see more apps on it as well, obviously, not too many, but definitely a very decent start, a decent proposition. Well done, Samsung, thoroughly enjoyable.